What's up, Internet World? We're the News 19 Nerds. I'm Leroy. I'm the Power Broker. No, you're not. How do you know? Because he has power. Oh! Happy, happy, happy. That's cute. How do you... <laughs> God, I wish you had said the word right. Anyway, <laughs> um, I guess I'll go by Michael then instead of the Power Broker. That's yeah. Fine. But uh, we don't know who the Power Broker is. We don't know if it's a he or a she or a... I have a theory. But we'll get to it because okay. it, it actually it actually was a viewer who said it who was like maybe it's this person I was like oh okay. but right. cool uh, so non spoilers have to out to start for episode three yep of New World Order that's what it's called okay of um, what is the show again go, go ahead and say it. I know you want to say it I know I want to say it right but, <laughs> but it you can't mind. the Falcon and the Winter Soldier but you want to say I'm not I won't do it Winter Falcon yes. Um, <laughs> The brother um, from another mother. The... The white wolf. <laughs> I like this episode, non-spoiler-wise, in terms of we're getting more of the dynamic, the the buddy cop, 48 mm -hmm. hours, if you will, between Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan, and working together, kind of begrudgingly working yeah. together, not necessarily... Liking each other. Yeah, but they're, they, they have a, a, a goal that they want to get done, and I like that they're doing that. Um, when we left from episode two... We That'd ended be, on uh, him going. We gotta go see Zemo. We gotta go see Zemo, and that's where the pick, show picks up for episode three. Yeah. Um, where would you? Yeah. Where would you? Out of all three, where would you place the episode ranking? I, I would say episode ranking. Where would you rank this episode? Like, in other words, as far as like out of five, because we do the, the, the out of um, five. Maybe a three. Really. Uh, I I need something to happen. Uh, we're at the halfway point now. This, I I enjoyed the action. I just feel like there wasn't a lot of plot progression for me. And I, I wanted something more. Maybe we'll get that with four, five, See, and six. I disagree. Mm -hmm. I give this a four and a half uh, um, mm -hmm. out of five. Okay. Because there's little nuggets that were there uh -huh. that leads me to believe <clears throat> certain things. And, and, and I'm looking for who said it. But if you, if you, if you remember who said this, S to say it in the chat to get your credit because I may not remember exactly who who, who did this. All but right, I, so we can get spoiled. We do get spoiled. So yeah. for me, this was first episode was good. Mm -hmm. Second episode is still the best in my opinion. Sure. That and this really and this great. one is third episode, but second best overall. Okay. Because of the little nuggets and plot points we've gotten, you talk about the power broker. Mm -hmm. Uh, a viewer, uh, uh, one somebody, and I don't. I'm sorry, I cannot remember. I, th I want to say it was Low Life, or it could have been D. Steezel. Somebody said the power broker is Thunderbolt Ross, hmm. and it, and it to me that theory has credence because Nigel, who was the doctor, worked for the CIA, and Thunderbolt Ross, being the the, the director of intelligence, was the deputy director. Or Isn't the, he the Department of Defense? Depart whatever his, his secretary, right? Whatever, secretary of Defense, yeah. whatever his title was. He would, the whole idea behind the fact of the super soldier program was that you had one, what would you do with an army of them? Mm -hmm. And if anybody would be in charge of that, it would be Thunderbolt Ross because we know he had his hand in not necessarily intentionally creating the Hulk. He saw that. He's seen what Captain he made America abomination. Did. He made abomination. Mm -hmm. So the idea of running that program and running it after it fell out of favor mm -hmm. would be attractive to him. So you don't buy into the theories of it being Zemo or Sharon Carter? Nope. Okay. Now those are red herrings to you? I think those are red herrings only because if the because the power broker sent people and, and Zemo was basically we need to stay away because if you're the power broker, mm -hmm. you would not walk through Madripoor, which was a when it, they said Madripoor. Yeah, I did, lost that meant my, nothing to me until I read about it. Whoo, but you were just like, Dad, this is it. This that blew my mind. So do you think we have mutants next week? What do you no, think? I don't. Well, okay. I, I don't know. But okay. this is the thing: the fact that they introduced Madripoor means that mutants are that they have a vision, an idea, because Madripoor. Hey, you want to know a secret? What? I thought that was a real place. I did too when I used to read the comics. Okay. <laughs> I, didn't, I was like a major port. When I looked it up, when I read oh, the comics, real. when okay. I read the comics, I was like, "That's got to be a real place." And yeah. I'm like, "This is before Google." Yeah. So when they said it, I had to go to the library. Yeah. I had to look this shit up. Yeah. <laughs> and then I had to come to find out. Oh, this is not a real place. No. 
I, I mean, talking, I'm talking Encyclopedia Britannica lookup. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Um, show my age there. <laughs> yeah. So when they said Madripoor, and Zemo was like, we need to not run afoul. We don't have pull like we would any place else. Mm -hmm. That let me know this is a place that even Zemo walks, treads carefully. I don't know how I feel about Sharon Carter not getting a pardon. I don't feel I like that it. was explained. That just seemed that seemed weird. All these other people got pardons. Bucky Barnes got a pardon. Bucky Barnes got a pardon because he was with them at the final battle in Endgame. Mm -hmm. Sharon Carter was not. And keep in mind, Sharon Carter, after Civil War, had to go on the run. She didn't go on the run with them. So yeah, if she had I, gone on the I run with that. them. I, just, I don't know. That just seems weird to me. My thing is, I think she's still on the run, mm -hmm. but I think she works for the CIA. I don't oh, think. she's like deep cover. Yeah, I don't think she's the power broker. I think she works for the CIA. Okay. I think she either works for the CIA or she's one of these other government agencies, SWORD, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think having her not have a pardon helps her credibility in the underworld. Sure, okay. Um, one thing that I didn't like about this episode is we didn't get any comment about racial relations like we did in episode one or episode two. I think you did. Oh, then I missed it. I'm when Zemo it. said, only, a, only an American would see a well-dressed black man and think pimp. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like that, like All that right. line, yeah, was deep as because when you think about what he's saying is your worldview is only is limited only based on your borders, right. and the world is so much bigger than that. Okay, and then the other thing that made me realize, I wouldn't say race relations to a certain extent, but when Zemo and Bucky and Sam start talking about Marvin Gaye, and then how they did not know. Zemo was royalty mm -hmm. meant that they never bothered to look up who Zemo really was mm -hmm. and that to me shows a lack of to me that shows the American imperialism that you don't care who your enemies are mm -hmm. they're my enemy instead of learning to study your enemy like he did uh huh right. and yeah. that and that was why there's only two people who've beaten the Avengers Thanos and Zemo yep yeah, yeah. only one of them's still alive that's true <laughs> that's true because one of them got his head cut off yeah um I kind of like this idea of, I don't know what the end game is going to be for like the end of the show and Zemo, but I do mm -hmm. like this idea of Zemo kind of working with them, not working with them. And I hope that they don't just, I think Marvel has done a good job now of not just killing your villain off. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they're not just... Figure they learn their lesson? Yeah, hopefully they're not just going to kill Zemo off or any type like that. But I, I like this idea of him being a foil to work against, for sure. I So for me, the reason why I rate this, and this is like, when I say this episode is two, it's really... Episode two is number one in my book. Mm -hmm. This is two A to me, okay. because it had so much with the Madripoor, you know, the little Easter egg for those of us who who know about the X Men and Patch, uh, the Gray Hulk. I learned, I learned about Patch through oh, you uh, did? a friend of the show, Susanna Polo, um, and her article on Polygon. The funniest thing is, is that no one knew who Wolverine was just because he wore a patch, and it was kind of like a lot of people were like, like Superman. Type at thing? least Superman had on uh, glasses. Hmm. And it's like, yeah. really? We don't know who this dude walking around who's about 5'2 and hair mm -hmm. and claws is. Uh, it, that used to tickle me as a child okay. um, and as an adult. You got that. And the little, the dynamic of these relationships and the fact that Zemo, that first scene between Zemo and Bucky was very powerful because Zemo's explaining to him, you were just a means to an end. It wasn't personal. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry this happened to you, yeah. but I had a mission, and you were an obstacle. And he's not he doesn't hate Bucky. He hates what Bucky represents, right. the fact that super soldiers should not exist. And he's willing to do whatever it takes to make sure they don't exist. Mm -hmm. I thought that was very interesting. I th Sam, to me, took a little backseat to this mm -hmm. because the thing about Sam, I feel like it's interesting. It's it goes into that idea that there's layers to this, and I, there's a, another word that goes with that, and I'm trying to remember who said that. There's layers, man. Mm -hmm. um, yes, Sam could talk about the racial relations that happen in America and try to explain to Bucky, but then Bucky comes back with, oh, you thought it was bad? Mm -hmm. You didn't know it was this bad? Let me introduce you to Patient Zero. And Patient Zero 
was the guy that they were experimenting on. Yeah. And Sam's mind is being blown by the fact of he's understanding that the world and his country is a little bit more complex than he ever thought it was. Right. And I think that's very, very interesting right. as far as going forward to show how this man is eventually going to take the mantle, in my opinion, right. of Captain America. For sure. Um, do we think that, are we, are we gonna see more nicks in the armor of the new Captain America? I feel like this episode we kind of, he, he's, he's turning to me. I oh, mean, I, 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 I don't think he's turning. You're just seeing who he really is. See, you, you have that pre-knowledge because you already know him from the comics who the character is. I wonder if who people like me who don't know him, uh -huh. I, I, I didn't hate him yet, but I'm starting to. I'm starting to see he's not who he claims to be, at least because of he seemed more aggressive in this episode in terms of do you know who we are? Do you know who I am? That, that's, a, a original like, cap wouldn't say something like that. Well, the, 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 even if I did know the backstory, mm -hmm. I would already have a suspicion of this man. You know why? Why? Because he was picked. Mm. He didn't rise. If you look at every single one of these heroes, yeah. None of them were picked by the government. Mm -hmm. Not one of the. If you think about the Avengers, yeah, you have people who were, who helped along the way, but none of these people was like they were tapped mm -hmm. by the United States government to represent them and their interests. Right. Steve Rogers wasn't picked. Iron Man wasn't picked. Uh, if you look at yeah, we have the Avengers, the Avengers Initiative people, but this was because. They were extraordinary people, right. but they weren't tapped to carry the mantle of Captain America. Right. And any time, sorry, the government says in this world that we live in, mm -hmm. hey, here's going to represent our interests, and thank you, black man, for the shield. Right. We're going to give it to this white guy. Right. I mean, and, it goes back to the Sokovia Accords of, you know, if they control when you uh -huh. can't go into a, a conflict or whatever. And sometimes yeah. the safest, sometimes... It, the, what Cap, how Cap said it, the safest is in our hands. Yeah, the safest we, hands are still our own. And we make the decision. So I was already apprehensive of him, and he looked like the good, the dude from Up at that last shot with his head scorched. Okay. Can't remember what that dude's name is, but look at him. They're, they're put side by side. One okay. of the greatest memes out there of 2021. Got it. So I like I always had that apprehension. And I like Wyatt Russell. I loved him in um, Overlord. I think he's good in this role, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think you're starting you're starting to see the cracks. To me, I've always felt like he was I know he's supposed to be the foil to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. But I think the idea is that he's not Captain America. He didn't earn it. Right. It was given to him. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference between, that will always be for me and Steve Rogers. Okay. Sam was picked by the Captain, the Captain America. America yeah. So that's different. That's like being knighted. Mm -hmm. The difference is the government was like, uh, let's look at these files. Yeah. Oh, he'll do what we tell him. Mm -hmm. That's to me. That's the difference. Okay. Uh, any other, any other things you want to talk about for episode three? Sharon Carter's role is very interesting in the sense of you talk about she didn't get a pardon. Mm -hmm. I, I like that she didn't get a pardon. I like that she's. Now, I, when I say this, I'm not talking about the comic version of Sharon Carter. I'm talking about what we see right now. Mm -hmm. Sharon Carter may be an altruistic and, and, and see the world I, I, idealistically. Mm -hmm. But her job has always been, she worked for S.H.I.E.L.D., she watched Captain America. She was a spy. She is a spy. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain type of person who is a spy versus a certain type of person who is a soldier. Mm -hmm. And so... To me, this fits her role very well. For what we've seen. Her. For what we've seen. So I'm, I'm a little upset that we now, we're just now getting to Zemo and Sharon Carter. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the fact a lot of people are not really happy with the Flag Smashers. Yeah, I think they're going to get... Before we, we didn't get to Wakanda. That's at the end. But I, I'm getting there. Oh, but, that, okay. but see, gotcha. that's the thing. There's a difference between being a spy and a soldier. Mm -hmm. um, the Flag Smashers are soldiers. They're not spies. They're not. You can tell, they're not. They're not very learned in the sense of how they're handling things. Sure. But we're noticing, they're growing up because we see Carly, blow up that installation, mm -hmm. and they're moving from being Robin Hoods to being 
full-fledged terrorists mm -hmm. before the media could easily paint them and, it, and they could easily say we're robbing from the rich, giving to the poor. With that act, they right. have definitely stepped their game up to being a threat. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at some of these people and their characters and how they operate, Zemo, he's an aristocrat, but he's also a soldier. Uh, Bucky, Bucky's an assassin. Whether you want to, that is an assassin. Yeah. Sam is a soldier. Sharon Carter's a spy. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at these people and you're looking at their jobs and who they are and you're watching them evolve in their roles coming together to fight what essentially is the second coming of the super soldier program. Right. Um, and then you throw in, like at the end, the white wolf noticing Wakanda's in the mix. The Kamoyo the, beads or whatever? The, yeah. Wakanda's in the mix because yeah. how can you work with Zemo? Mm -hmm. I, I'm curious because this was done... I mean, the scripting had to be done before Bozeman passed, so they probably won't touch on that here. I think they would touch on the fact that how can how do you think T'Challa would feel working with Zemo? And I hope mm -hmm. Bucky comes back with, wasn't T'Challa the one who spared his life? Mm -hmm. Because that that that's the counter to that. Yeah, but I I feel like that's so easy. Like they should know that. I, I don't know. But I mean, but if you if somebody killed your king, it doesn't matter what the other king said. You still mad? Like mm -hmm. if somebody killed you, and I got to work, you know, whoever has to work with you, I'm still gonna be mad they killed you. Thanks. I mean, I'm not gonna kill me. I have a child. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad I got in this. Uh, but you could have named Avery or somebody. Who wanna kill Avery? I don't know. Everybody <laughs> loves Avery. See? Yeah. Sure. Um, no, I'm I'm really. This is the kind of show, to me that I was looking forward to because you can put in so many different characters mm -hmm. with your big guns, your A-list stars and your C-list stars. That's to me what these shows are. These are the comics mm -hmm. translated. The movies are your super events, your, your, your huge events. These comics are translated into these shows and you get more of a story, you get more character development. Sure, sure. So do you, I mean, do you see a future where the 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 shows are more like you know your everyday comics, and then the movies become like the crossover events, or crossover events, more of your summer events? Like so, Captain America three was Civil War. Mm -hmm. To me, that's your crossover event. That's your big summer event. Sure. Every year, comic uh, your Marvel and your DC. Uh, sometimes your Valiant get in on this too because they have a, a, a nice little universe. They have these huge events, and the tie-in books. Mm -hmm are the shows. Okay. These shows that lay the groundwork so that you can get to. Because think about it, in 23 movies, we never got the relationship we did with Wanda and Vision that we did in this, what, nine episode show? Sure. Like, sure. people were, like, teared up mm -hmm. when the kids left and, you know, Wanda had to, you know... Yeah. So, I'm. you're going to see... I love this because you're going to see more people drop in and out. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't take much to shoot and come and shoot a couple of Probably days not, and, yeah. and then do a scene and then you're out. Yeah. Kind of like what they do in comics. You know, this person shows up, Moon Knight shows up, and this person shows up, and Ghost Rider rides in. Right. Yeah. Um, the show continues to, continues to, to surpass our expectations. Um, even though I didn't like this episode as much, I still enjoy the show overall. And um, I'm excited to see where episode four goes and where what we're going to get one thing i will say that shows you the vision of marvel mm -hmm. winter soldier falcon and winter soldier the show is essentially what gi joe should be mm. and no, in in three episodes we've gotten a better gi joe premise mm -hmm. than we did in any of those movies they made i mean rise of cobra is pretty great no it's not <laughs> it's literally trash set on fire, rolled down a hill into an orphanage. I mean, I don't think it literally is that. It is literally that, that. That's not what happens. That's when, I, when it opens, that's all I see. I see okay. somebody with a dumpster mm -hmm. tossing gasoline, and uh, okay. And they're like, see that orphanage down there? Watch this. And then Steve-O comes in and is like, this is the episode of Jackass. Man. That's exactly what those, those movies are terrible. I like The Rock. I like Channing Tatum. I even like The Wayans Kid. But those movies... Are terrible. Oh, Wings but, Kid. 
He's older than you. Is he? Pretty sure he is. Eh. All right. We'll All right. agree to disagree. All right. Um, but no, I, I just... When you look at this show, especially action in this episode, and you realize you saw... In the first episode, you saw Falcon with his wings and taking on people. Then you saw Bucky being an assassin. Then you see Zemo in this episode, Sharon Carter. And you see the super soldier. You realize mm -hmm. and you're like, oh my gosh, imagine if G.I. Joe looked like this. And you're like, this is G.I. Joe. Yeah. Marvel basically took G.I. Joe and was like, hey, let me borrow that. And turned it into the Winter Falcon show. The Winter Falcon show. Um you going to wrap up with that? All right, guys. Um, this is our opinion on the show, guys and gals, uh, guys and dolls, whatever you identify as. So we want to hear from you. Let us know in the comments. Uh, hit that bell. Whatever it is. Um, that's up to y'all. You don't want to hit the bell? That's fine. We can still make stuff. But if you want to know when we make stuff, hit that bell. You're so antagonistic. You can also find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, WLTX. And that's it. We're out. <laughs>